morning and welcome on this Divine Mercy Sunday. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you. We celebrate God's mercy today, the gift of compassionate forgiveness that is offered to us all. Let us be mindful of the gift of his son Jesus, who took upon himself the sins of the world in order to redeem all of us. Let us offer gratitude as we lift up our hearts and voices to the author of divine mercy. Lord Jesus, risen, risen Son of God, your resurrection stands as the great sign of the Father's love. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, risen Son of God, you give us new birth to a living hope. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, risen Son of God, you are the giver of Easter peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Every day, they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day, 
the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through res the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this, you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. 
as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand to his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever 
found yourself in this situation, you're laying, you're laying flat on your back in a hospital bed. How are you feeling? Well, obviously, you can't be feeling too well or you wouldn't be in the hospital. But I mean, even, be, even beyond the, the medical condition, I'm sure there's nervousness, there's, there's a sense of fear, the sense of uncertainty, anxiety. I mean, I could probably go on and list a whole bunch of things, but that's probably how we would feel. And then something wonderful happened. Someone walks into your room that you recognize, maybe a loved one, close friend, or husband or wife, or child perhaps, and all of a sudden, all of that just vanishes. It just dissipates. And you say, oh, I'm so happy you're here. It totally changes our disposition, doesn't it? I think that's what happened when Jesus appeared, the disciples in the upper room. You notice he actually had to say, peace be with you, twice. Wasn't the first, didn't the first one work? Well, I think it said they were joyful, but I think there was still part of them that was fearful. You know, they've been fearing for their lives, cowering together in the upper room. And I'm sure there was that sense of fear, what would happen to them. And also, what would Jesus say? Imagine Peter denied him three times. The other disciples fled in his moment of need in the Garden of Gethsemane. What do you think Jesus would have said to them? What do you think they would think Jesus would say to them? But he said something very profound. Peace be with you. Not once, but twice. Peace be with you. And he says, then go. He breathed upon them. He gave them the strength to go forth. He, in effect, shared his mercy with them in such a beautiful and powerful way. And he wants to share that mercy with us, too. He wants us to share it with each other. With that living presence of Christ within us, he wants us to share that living presence, that sense of mercy. And what, what is mercy? Well, I looked up some definitions of mercy, and there's many definitions. And they all are suitable, obviously. I mean, how do you describe mercy? Is God's outflowing of love to us? Here's some simple definitions the wellspring of joy, serenity, and peace. Oh, God certainly can bring us joy, serenity, and peace. The intimate and supreme act by which God comes to meet us. Or the fundamental law that dwells in the heart of each person who looks sincerely into the eyes of his brothers and sisters on their path of life. Or the bridge that connects God and man opening our hearts to the hope of being loved forever despite our sinfulness. Mercy is the fullest expression of God's love for us. He sent his son Jesus to us to show us that God wants to be close to us. He wants to be intimate with us. He wants to share his life with us. And he wants then us to share that life with one another. As he is merciful to each one of us, then we should share that mercy. Because we can't share the mercy of God completely because we're not God, but we share that part of mercy that we have with someone else. Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. I was listening last night on EWTN to the, the they had a video on Divine Mercy and the, the whole history of it with Sister Faustina who uh, had a vision, had a number of visions. And one of the visions, he said, I want you to draw. Let me just walk over here. I want you to uh, have someone paint this image. Now, it's very interesting that, you know, most paintings, um, the, uh, the person who has the idea in mind might tell the painter, well, you know, this is what I like to do. But she, she would come every day and kind of like lean over the shoulder of the painter and say, oh, no, 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 a little bit more this way, or a little color this way, or no, you don't have it quite right. I think most painters would probably go berserk, <laughs> you know, they'd lose their patience. But this, this painter, this artist, 
had patience and painted it. There's a whole history of, of how this painting moved around, how there were some people that uh, wanted it in certain places, and they would, make a, uh, they would get an artist to make a copy of it and then try to replace it so nobody would notice that it was missing. <laughs> they did this twice. Very interesting story. And then Jesus, a number of times, would appear to her, would reveal something about himself. He would say he wanted this, he wanted this to spread around the world. He wanted God's mercy to be made known to people. And this happened around 1935 when she had the vision of this. So God was in, 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 effect, in effect saying that, you know, I know what's coming up, the World War II, how terrible that communism would be coming. Uh, and this, this, of course, was painted in Vilnius in uh, um, Lithuania, the capital of Lithu Lithu Lithuania. So that's where that was painted. Well, of course, this is not the original. This is a copy of it. So God's mercy wants to flow from us. And it's very interesting that initially, small copies, small little cards were made, and many soldiers were carrying their pockets during the war. And of course, it started to spread throughout the world. And now, of course, on Palm Sunday, it gave out about like 100 different, um, different sized pictures of divine mercy. And I probably will try to get some more for you and uh, have them available so you can also Put this in a window somewhere or put it in a special place in your home and turn off and to that wonderful God who loves us with such great mercy. I came across also a little booklet, a little pamphlet on divine mercy, but this is a litany. I thought, as I read it over, it's a litany of trust. We have to have trust in the Lord. Many times underneath the words that say, Jesus, I trust in you. And think of all the times in our lives we don't trust in him. All the many different uh, specific things we don't trust in. So let me read this litany to you. And um, the response is, deliver me, Jesus. At least for part of it. And I'll tell you later on the other words that you need to say. From the belief that I, from the belief that I have to earn your love, Jesus, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that I am unlovable, deliver me, Jesus. From the false security that I have what it takes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear that trusting you will leave me more destitute, deliver me, Jesus. From all suspicion of your words and promises, deliver me, Jesus. From the rebellion against childlike dependency on you, deliver me, Jesus. From refu refusals and reluctances in accepting your will, deliver me, Jesus. From anxiety about the future, deliver me, Jesus. From resentment or excessive preoccupation with the past, deliver me, Jesus. From restless self-seeking in the present moment, deliver me, Jesus. From disbelief in your love and presence, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being asked to give more than I have, deliver me, Jesus. From the belief that my life has no meaning or worth, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of what love demands, deliver me, Jesus. From discouragement, deliver me, Jesus. For the following you say, Jesus, I trust in you that you are continuing holding me, sustaining me, loving me. Jesus, I trust in you. That your love goes deeper than my sins and failings and transforms me. Jesus, I trust in you. That not knowing what tomorrow brings is an invitation to lean on you. Jesus, I trust in you. That you are with me in my suffering. Jesus, I trust in you that my suffering united to your own will bear fruit in this life and the next. Jesus, I trust in you. That you will not leave me orphan, that you are present in your church. Jesus, I trust in you. That your plan is better than anything else. Jesus, I trust in you. That you always hear me and in your goodness always respond to me. Jesus, I trust in you. Do you give me the grace to accept forgiveness and to forgive others? Jesus, I trust in you. 
If you give me all the strength I need for what I asked, Jesus, I trust in you. That my life is a gift, Jesus, I trust in you. That you would teach me to trust you, Jesus, I trust in you. That you are my Lord and my God, Jesus, I trust in you. That I am your beloved one, Jesus, I trust in you. I'll probably I'll try also to put this on our website because I think it's very beautiful. I think too often we don't trust in Jesus. Too often we get let our fears and anxieties and our worries get the best of us. So especially during this most difficult time, I think uh, this Divine Mercy Sunday is such a wonderful and appropriate time to really say, Jesus, help me to trust in you. And this afternoon, from 3 to 5 p.m., we will have Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament here for you to come uh, and spend some time with the Lord. Also this evening at 7 p.m., I'll have my fireside chat, and we'll uh, go over the uh, Divine Mercy um, chaplet. I also, uh, that will be on the website uh, probably in the next few hours. So if you want to look it over, we can do the, and I'll speak about more about the Divine Mercy in the chaplet. Uh, this evening at 7 p.m. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray, my dear friends, for all who seek or need the presence of Christ. Our response is, loving God, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the church that we may spread God's mercy to those most in need, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For our world, that we may experience the peace of Christ during these days of uncertainty, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those who work for the common good but receive inadequate compensation for their labors, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For those who use their power to make systematic changes to bring justice and equity to those who have no voice, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For all during this pandemic, may we feel the presence of Jesus by our side, comforting and sustaining us in our time of need, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For a heavenly welcome to all who have lost their lives in this COVID-19 pandemic, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For our parish community, in gratitude to you as you respond to the needs of our parish and in doing so enable us to meet the needs of those we serve, we pray. Loving, loving God, God, hear our prayer. prayer. The, special, the special intention for our Mass is repose of the souls of Audrey Zach, deceased members of the Macleys and Kuzlik family, and Louise Tipton, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. Recently, recently deceased, especially Deacon Jean Nebbiola, that he may experience peace and comfort in the arms of our loving God, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. For the prayers we offer now in the silence of our hearts.
May they be united with the prayers of Mary, the Holy Mother of God, St. Dominic, our patron, we pray. Loving God, hear our prayer. God of peace and mercy, give us eyes to see the loving presence of your Son, hearts to receive him, <laughs> and courage to sh share signs of his presence with others. We ask all this in his holy name. Amen. my brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But, on, but during this time, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ of our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising we he stored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the hymn of your glory as they acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son O lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to to yourself that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, as you look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Dominic, our patron, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession your presence will rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance to peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Be the servant Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop. Be order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout this world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. That we hope and enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. For Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and, re live and reign forever and ever. 
peace of the Lord be with you all. Take off each other's sign of peace. 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 Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Remember, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And uh, you may have noticed that during the prayer of the faithful, we prayed for our uh, former uh, de uh, deacon, uh, retired deacon Jean Nebbiello, who passed away this week after a lengthy illness. And uh, we put a tribute on our website uh, picture and uh, nice obituary uh, on, on our Facebook page, uh, so you can certainly see it there. Uh, because of the uh, ongoing restrictions uh, at this time, uh, there's no celebration of his life at a funeral mass, but we will certainly schedule something when the restrictions are lifted at the convenience of the family. So keep Deacon Gene uh, in your prayers and also his family members and friends who, who grieve the loss of him. And uh, just another announcement, um, as I said this afternoon, here between 3 and 5, we will have Adoration of Blessed Sacrament. I have put some reflective music on for several hours. Um, and then this evening at 7 p.m., I will um, recite the um, Chapter of the Divine Mercy and also speak about a few other things at 7 p.m. in the rectory. 
streamed again live to you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joyful, joyful, we are to Sure.